Kitchen, my name is Daniel Shuki, I go to Golden Shopping University, I'm a researcher in an area of project development and effective design and engineering. This means, basically, I put feelings into products, how to make products more desirable and uh, to make products to achieve the right feelings and emotions. So, uh, one expression would be relatively new in the area is nudging and uh, this lecture today will be on what is nudging and how can it be achieved. Yes, one of the definitions I found frequently in different places both on the internet and in literature is, is this. Nudging is to alert, remind or mildly warn. Hmm, what does it tell us? Not much. It's essentially right, but uh, what, what does it mean? Yeah, it means that uh, we want to make people do something, alert them about things, remind them, well, you should do this, or you should do this, and uh, make them to change their behavior a little bit into the right direction. What is the right direction is something which depends on the situation and so on, but we come to that later. Um, but, well, you can probably recognize yourself when you say, well, you, you have these uh, situations where you, well, know that probably I should keep the speed limit, or probably I should take the trash out, or maybe it was not good to throw this uh, plastic thing not in the recycle bag, but in the combustible uh, waste bag bin. So, so those things um, we all experience every day. And nudging is about actually making people or make it easier for people to take the right decisions. But before we start and go into uh, having a look how to change people's behavior, um, we have to understand why do people behave differently? Why do people, despite better knowing, do things wrong? I have this example of the speed limit, so why do I speed and um, don't keep the speed limit, which is which is uh, on the road? Uh, in, in fact, it's it's like that. You are in a hurry, maybe you are in a situation where other things are more important, and um, then those things just just happen. However, you know that there is more the speed limit because this road might be dangerous in certain circumstances. It might be just for environmental reasons or, or whatever. You know it, but you uh, can override that. And that is, of course, of course, we have the freedom to make our own decisions. And um, sometimes we, well, how to put it this way, we, we go over the line sometimes. But what are the reasons? Well, I was looking and um, I, I really didn't find a lot, but some of the things I think I can I could identify. One is the experience. I'm inexperienced. So um, back to that example, driving a car past means that the risk for actually injuring yourself or uh, somebody else is increasing. The fact is that um, if, you, if you double the speed, you increase the energy inside your car or in, in your car with uh, with a factor eight meaning that um, it becomes increasingly more difficult to get to stop the car when when this in emergency situation happens and that's why you have this speed limit many people do not know that many people are not experienced what happens in this situation or they actually think they are better than they are and um, in fact then things can happen um, people might be poorly informed. It might be a situation where you don't know that uh, there is this speed limit, they don't know that there is a actual risk in, in the road later on, and then you under don't understand why should I drive so slow here. It might be things like feeling uncomfortable, um, might be physical uncomfortable things, so I'm I'm freezing, I'm hungry, I'm tired, all, all that stuff could be like you're in a hurry, could be like things that take other uh, take your attention. Yeah, for example, if you're uh, a parent with small children, you probably know that in the evening you go home and uh, you find out, well, okay, the kids are, are really cranky and, and you have to deal with a lot of stuff. 
then, then the tendency is, is higher actually to do wrong things. Then you always also have people who are just unempathic. I don't care. This I don't care attitude. And uh, if they really don't care, yeah, well, then there is no will to, to make things right. Or it's too complicated. For example, the other day it was cold outside, it was dark outside, it was a little raining. And uh, the question is, well, the trash bin in the kitchen was actually overflowing. So something had to be done. It had to be thrown out. But then you think, oh, no, I don't want to get out. You have to get out. I have to get put on my shoes, my coat, and go over the uh, backyard to the uh, trash bin. Oh, no, I don't get, don't do it. I know what the right thing would be. I don't do it because all of this, uh, all of the reasons here, I was feeling uncomfortable. It was freezing. It was complicated. And in the end, honestly, I didn't care. So, so it's not, m in many cases, not only one reason. There are several reasons. And probably you could add more of uh, those reasons. Um, it's important to understand why people don't do the right thing and uh, from there the you can then go to nudging and say okay how can we lower the threshold to do the, thing, the things right and that you can only do if you understand why they don't. Here's an example you probably know or you might have guessed it bit older study but uh, anyhow I do think that the, the situation is the same thing so that 92% uh, of Americans believe that it's important to wash your hands after being in the bathroom but it's uh, about two-thirds only actually doing it and uh, why is that you could wonder and then you can go back to the previous slide have a look on that and uh, say well okay there might be there might be in a hurry or it might be too complicated or, or what whatever the reason might be uh, but what, what, what I want to point out here is that uh, there is a difference between attitude and behavior. So um, saying something and doing something are different things. You're not, people are usually not congruent. You, you, you know, these uh, parents telling their kids uh, that smoking is not good for their health and they should never do that, but uh, in the end they are smoking. So uh, don't do like I do, do like I tell you. Um, doesn't work actually. Uh, you have to be some type of role, mo role model in order to make people to change their behavior. When you start nudging, it's very important that uh, you nudge only things which they have the right attitude on. So you would would probably not be able to con to convince people doing something they don't believe in. This hand washing thing is something apparently most people do think is important, then they don't do it. And when they don't do it and leave the bathroom without washing hands, uh, they are, well, they might have a bad conscience or they might at least be aware that, uh, well, that, that was not, not, not entirely correct. Um, that is the prerequisite. This situation is a prerequisite for uh, actually being able to nudge. You might, you have to make sure that the people have the right attitude in or and you enhance it by, by nudging. Okay, let's stay in the bathroom just a little while. Uh, here's another example. It is uh, an example on uh, urinals, in man's bathroom, obviously. And in many of these urinals, you can find the picture of a fly printed inside the bowl. Um, yeah, well, Probably every man has experienced that before. Every woman, I guess, can easily guess why. Uh, in, in fact, this is reducing the spillage of urine a lot. It says 80%. I don't know if it's exactly 80%, but something around that. Uh, so, so in, in fact, this type of nudging uh, reduces the actual cost of cleaning, the amount of, of work around that and also the pleasantness of uh, men's bathroom so uh, yeah you can you can actually see the purpose of, of nudging how, how it works out here um, as, a, as a little thought I would uh, like to give you is uh, uh, you should think about why is this type of nudging working I mean what psychology psychological process is working making a man want to pee on the fly. Mm. 
anyhow, I think that's uh, more complicated <laughs> to answer than I could do that in this lecture. So let's apply this learnings with this knowing how could we make people eat more healthy food. As I told you, uh, first we have to understand what are the principles, what are the mechanisms making people eating or having bad eating habits. So uh, starting in the grocery store, starting at the point where, where you wonder uh, what is um, what is uh, maybe healthy eating, what is uh, what is good for you, what's not good for you, and I I put some of the reasons. I don't know if they are true. Uh, you probably would have to do some more and thorough examination on that, but it could be that uh, it's force of habit. So when I'm in the grocery store, I always buy food. I always buy meat. I mean, um, or when when I think about uh, that later on, when I get home and realize that I bought a lot of meat, a lot of uh, unhealthy stuff, I realize, ah, oh, well, why, why didn't I think about that? Yeah, I simply forgot about that. And um, even if you would now say, well, how can you forget about that? It is easily happening, actually, I can tell from my own experience. Uh, one thing I always try to, um, to do is I would like to take a uh, reusable bag with me to the grocery store so I don't have to buy plastic bags and uh, in the end in 90% of all cases I get out of the store with plastic bags because I left the other one in the car or I left it at home I simply forget it it's something my, my, my thoughts are somewhere else uh, and, and nudging would be actually a tool which makes me aware of oh well don't forget it don't uh, don't don't uh, leave it at home Anyhow, um, back to our example here. So uh, people probably forgot it or uh, they, they are in a situation where they can't imagine a meal without food, uh, without meat. There should be meat in, in, in the meal. That is what, what they learned, that is what they grown up with. And uh, maybe they are not having good alternatives in, in, in some way. Also, nudging means not to change attitudes it uh, means to change the behavior and now we get to what i said i would do later in talking about the right attitude what is the right attitude it has nothing to do with how we value what is right from a certain ideological perspective but right in this situation in this situation of of this problem solving the right attitude here is that uh, people that you have to find an attitude that people that make people wanting to be uh, to eat healthier uh, if if people don't want to eat healthier it's very difficult to change their behavior you can force them uh, yeah, by sports some some way but uh, not on on voluntarily on on their own so you have to extract the right attitudes and the right attitude would be yeah well you live longer you live healthier you have a higher quality of life and and all that stuff that would be the right attitude and i want to change that and then I can start offering alternatives, offering hints, clues, and, and, and so on. And uh, that would be uh, things like, well, I could present the veter vegetarian or more healthy food alternatives in a more attractive way. So uh, maybe it could be in front, it could be in, in a way that is presented better, it has better illumination, it has uh, the wider shelves, it has, uh, well, you, you you, you got the idea, I guess. Um, you can make it easier to access. So uh, usually when I'm looking for vegetarian uh, food, um, I have to go longer ways. I have to look for the freezer and then probably it's in the last freezer of the in, in the last corner of the store. And, and this makes it more complicated. Remember the, sli uh, the slide number two, I think it was, where I said that uh, it is... Uh, the more complicated it is, the less it's likely that you will use that alternative. So uh, make it more easy, make it more accessible, make it more visible to, to customers. Uh, make it easier to reach for the vegetarian alternative. That's, uh, that's a, pro a probable nudge. Uh, also, um, you could uh, connect vegetarian eating with uh, the right 
yeah, attitudes or the right uh, right lifestyle in in some way. So uh, you might have people, or well, there are people I know, who say uh, uh, vegetarian food is inferior to to meat, um, and uh, then you should actually connect and to build uh, the the right circumstances around that that uh, making vegetarian food more hip making it more modern making it more attractive making it more yeah well you you get you get the point here as well you could connect it to other things like uh, environment not only healthy but also environmental aspect uh, if you have people with these attitudes or you could have it in the way of it's maybe cheaper buying uh, vegetables than meat um, it could, could connect it to uh, animal health um, that uh, I mean killing animals is something which is might be not that ethical or people consider it as ethical you have to find what are the right attitudes you can use here the right attitudes and uh, uh, and uh, then you convert them into a scenario which makes people more likely to change their behavior here we have yet another example this is uh, from a book by Chip and Dan Fee uh, the book is ma called Made to Stick, which I can really recommend to read. It is uh, mostly about this type of nudging and about how to convince people and to change people's behavior. However, um, this uh, is a case which they uh, talk about. The narrative shows that um, uh, the state of Texas in the United States uh, spent a lot of money and effort to clean or to, to cope with littering problem uh, pr uh, problem so uh, uh, what they did they cleaned uh, up the, um, the the zippered areas they put up uh, uh, trash bins uh, they were campaigning um, in order to uh, to improve the the situation the problem did not did not change a lot so uh, they tried to uh, make that uh, make that uh, approach the problem from a legal perspective and uh, they put a heavy fine on uh, on this but uh, really it didn't change because yeah well littering is um, is, is a felony which is yeah well difficult to difficult to charge difficult to find people difficult to uh, change a behavior by by threatening people with uh, with, with fines so um, instead of that they went on and had a look um, f at uh, the situation and uh, were wondering who is actually littering that could be different social groups that could be different age groups that could be different genders that could be yeah however in in the end they uh, found out that uh, the problem was mostly originated from men and uh, if you remember slide number three where i said well what could be uh, could the reason be that was this thing what i said uh, and what did what did, uh, did i write uh, un empathic i they didn't care actually they, they, they didn't care uh, that was the the major part of the littering of the litter so next step was then finding the attitude well if you if you have that i don't do not care you have to find a way to make people care and um, they were looking in the lifestyle of this particular group and uh, these men apparently were men which were quite conservative in their attitudes conservative in in their upbringing and and, and so on and um, one thing which was um, apparent was that these people these men apparently um, were reacting very much to respect and respect each other respect each other's um, property respect each other's uh, attitude and, and so on so uh, they came up with this uh, slogan don't mess with taxes and uh, don't mess with taxes is directed directly to these pr uh, persons who are men who are belonging to this group who are having a conservative conservative uh, view of of the situation and uh, yeah don't mess with taxes means then if you litter uh, you you destroy taxes you destroy our state so stop it 
and uh, that actually worked in in the end uh, the the price of this type of slogan and then this type of uh, campaigning was uh, just a small part of the money they which was spent for the cleaning and for the campaigning before so so in the end it worked out and uh, this example shows that uh, the more intel you have the more uh, thoroughly you go into details and have a look on how did these people live how what are the values of these people then you can try to to grab them in 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 this in this way and uh, uh, nudging means not forcing somebody nudging means just a polite and um, yeah, slight slightly warning or slightly um, slightly encouraging support in order to, uh, to, do, to to change their behavior if you look on the sign on the right hand side and uh, that one I found actually in, in Texas um, I think this gives mess uh, mixed me messages uh, certainly you have this don't mess with Texas which is the um, the effective part and uh, which actually nudges you and then you have the threatening part where, you, where it says well okay if you if you litter you have to pay a thousand dollars fine um personally i wouldn't put it on the same sign however i do think that they have uh, the, the right the right way so the big one is the slogan and the wo uh, then the smaller one the threatening part is to reinforce the, the, that slogan um, probably it would be better just to have the, the slogan by itself and then have s different signs if you needed them so then let's assume that you actually achieved this goal let's assume that you got rid of littering let's assume that uh, people have changed their behavior and thereby also uh, their attitudes and all the ways which otherwise had end up in nature outside uh, now ends up in waste bins and uh, here you have a typical photo of uh, how a waste bin could look like this is taken in sweden but i guess that uh, it would be look very similar in many countries in the world what you can see is that they have very different materials you have uh, um, different wastes you have biologically degradable stuff you have things which is not degradable so it needs to be treated in in different way so there are different ways now to treat that waste one thing is to put it as it is on the landfill which is most certainly the worst possibility uh, second possibility would to uh, would be to put it into an incineration plant and burn it you can then in best case reuse the energy in times or in types of, of heat or maybe even generating electricity but uh, however still it's not the best solution um, the best solution i think you understand is that uh, it should be uh, separated uh, according to uh, what type of material to according to what type of treatment could be done and um, for for this there are waste separation plants meaning that this material as it is now is uh, delivered through the waste separation plant and uh, you have uh, robots but in most cases as well people sitting there standing there um, separating the uh, the waste according to uh, to the sources and then for the further treatment but uh, then on the other side maybe you could make people to separate the waste in before they, they even put it into the bin here is how that would look like probably um, if you disregard the cookie monster down there which uh, would look very much like the previous picture in the previous slide uh, all all um, different wastes are, are mixed up but on the other hand uh, the cookie monster has a very uh, strong nudging effect because people uh, recognize this uh, as a bin but it's very different it uh, sticks out between other types of bins and uh, maybe encourages 
uh, people more to actually not litter and then put their uh, and put their waste into a bin. So that's the first step. But the next step would be then, as I told you, to separate uh, the your waste according to the different sources, uh, different materials, different sources. And for this, uh, you can see two pictures uh, in the uh, in the upper section of the slide. However, even there is a difference. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see bigger containers, which are often positioned close to a facility, like your flat or, or your working place or something like that. And you would, uh, in theory, collect your waste at your home. You can pre-sort it or you go with your complete waste container down there and then you sort it when you're at the container here. On the other hand, on the left hand side, uh, you have uh, containers which are put up in public places. You can see that uh, on the left hand side of the left hand upper picture, you can see there are um, wending machines and these wending machines um, well, they are creating waste and um, by putting these waste containers close by, you're nudging people to, uh, to uh, dispose the material properly. So in theory, you should achieve the same goal, but with different means. So depending on the situation, depending on your personal situation, depending on the spatial situation, depending on uh, the, the situation you are brought in, uh, you would need different types of nudging to achieve the same goal. The more time you have for focusing on the task of uh, waste separation, uh, the more complicated the system can be and uh, the more um, sophisticated the type of nudging can be. So uh, the cookie monster on the left hand side down is uh, a way which you would probably put on the beach or would you probably put in, in public places, places where you are on a run. Uh, probably when you dispose your waste you probably don't even stop. You just pass by, put it in there and that's about it. I, I think in those situations it's very, very difficult to nudge people uh, to separate that, that waste. So, okay, in these cases, we might accept that uh, the, the result is a very blended type of waste, which we either have to burn or bring to a, to a second separation plant. Um, in, in the uh, uh, case of the public, a situation but where you are standing at the vending machine where you may be waiting it could be some type of uh, subway uh, subway station where this is placed you have a little bit more time so you buy um, your snack your drink or whatever you consume it standing waiting and then you have uh, a couple of seconds actually it's, it's really a matter of seconds to decide which bin you use on the right hand side, this is something where you uh, can use much more time. You Probably you would uh, pre-sort it in your flat, as I said, uh, or inside your office building. But uh, what you can do, you can stand actually outside by those containers and sort your waste, which takes much more time, uh, much more engagement. But the level of notching uh, is, is changing, or the quality of notching is changing. Uh, when, when you have very sm a very small time window where people passing by, Cookie Monster down there, um, you need a very rough, very emotional notching thing. The Cookie Monster is very emotional. You recognize it, you get a certain feeling, you get a certain mm, uh, association, and uh, then you understand, okay, I put it there. Um, and uh, the more we go to towards the, uh, the big containers, the more cognitive this notching can be. You could imagine that you at these containers in the upper right corner even have some type of instruction manual how to use it and, and how to um, sort and, and so on. Okay, enough with waste. Let's uh, come to another thing, 
Uh, this is a study which I have personally been engaged in. Uh, it was a study with the Toyota material handling on warehouse trucks. Those are forklift trucks, which are electrical propulsed and uh, are used inside warehouses. Um, the uh, purpose of this study was in fact to improve ergonomic aspects in trucks. We started up with uh, having a look what are the most common ergonomic problems with, with warehouse trucks. Uh, we were looking at drivers, we were looking at uh, why were drivers sick. And uh, we could see that uh, many of uh, warehouse truck drivers had problems with their back, their upper upper back, uh, their, their arms and uh, um, may, maybe even their necks. The reason for this is that you're sitting in the truck, you have to imagine that situation sitting in the truck and then you're operating a pallet in 30 meters height, which you have to do, you have to flex your neck a lot. Uh, and uh, that in, in turn actually strains your neck, your muscles, and um, when, when you do that frequently, often, every day, eight hours a day, then you get uh, quite significant pain. One thing which uh, we suggested was actually changing the steering wheel from the older one, which is on the left-hand side, to the newer one, which is on the right-hand side. Uh, you can see that the steering wheel on the right, the new steering wheel on the right hand side is uh, significantly smaller. Uh, the uh, mechanical uh, coupling is different. It's just an electronic sensor mounted in the inside the box and then uh, the signal is, is given to, uh, to a motor to put the, uh, the wheel of the truck in, in the right position to, to go. Uh, we could see that that was significantly lowering the strain on your back, your neck and your arm because you have a armrest on the right hand side which you can see the black area there and um, uh, you can then just use two fingers, your thumb and then uh, yeah uh, and anyhow you can use just two fingers to turn the, the wheel. So uh, what do you think the drivers thought of it. Well, we introduced it to warehouse workers and uh, most of these people were negative towards it. Well, okay, you could see, say, okay, it's a new system, you need to get adjusted to it, it takes some time and so on. But uh, we were also interested in what is the reason for it. I mean, they were used to the bigger wheel, now you have a, a new smaller one, but what are the reasons why you wouldn't actually see the objective, the objective advantages you have from from the product itself. We did an interview study on, I think it was fifteen or twenty, well, quite quite a number of, of uh, warehouse workers uh, who were used to warehouse trucks from different branches and different companies, and one thing came up again and again. They say it does not look good. It does feel. It does not feel good. And then we started. Okay, let's have a look. What is the typical warehouse worker? They are men in majority, or yeah, well, they are men in majority. They are men with uh, big muscles because they have to heavy do do heavy lifting. They have to uh, maneuver things and. Uh, this little steering wheel in these big hands just do not feel right. It does not feel right from a perspective of image. So how, how does it look like if I, as a man, one of those workers told you, have a toy which I'm operating? It must be male stuff. And then he referred to, to the bigger steering wheel. You might laugh now, but uh, those are yeah, effective aspects of the product. So you can see that the product is much better. You can see that the product performs better, but still it does not look good. Uh, if you refer to the third slide, which uh, uh, listed a couple of reasons why uh, you might be resistant to nudging, um, you can find that, uh, yeah, well, if you don't have 
people around you which are supporting you which which directly understand what you're doing or, or what, what 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 you're doing is, is the right thing uh, you will most likely do as the others do so if everybody else litters you will litter it's not necessarily so that you actually uh, share different attitude or different values it's just because everybody does it it um, you would do the same thing and if everybody thinks that the big wheel is uh, the more male the more manly stuff then you would probably prefer the big wheel however now we were in the situation where the truck was built the truck was delivered um, the design was uh, the design was uh, fixed luckily uh, toyota as a company uh, still had the big wheel as an option so the big wheel was in the beginning selling uh, outselling the the newer smaller wheel two to one or something like that so uh, what toyota did is uh, uh, was um, doing a, a marketing trick so uh, what what they did they increased the price for the electronic the new version and if you increase the price the perception changes oh if it's more expensive it must be much better right and uh, slowly the perception of the drivers of the workers changed oh the machine is much it's much more elaborate it's much more sophisticated it's much more expensive uh, you have extra equipment which you couldn't get with the uh, with the old version and, and so on and um, yeah eventually the attitude changed and uh, when the attitude changed mm, when when toyota felt that they made a change there and said well okay the smaller new steering wheel would be the new standard and the bigger old steering wheel would still be available but for lower price and in this case you really really uh, reduce the image of the old one that was uh, i think it's not only nudging it has to do with actually not changing the behavior but also changing the attitudes it was a real gamble of the company but uh, in the end they succeeded and if you have a look on warehouse trucks nowadays at least uh, in uh, europe yeah i think in the us as well uh, you will find these smaller steering wheels which are in fact much better much more effective much more ergonomic than the old solutions here's an example of nudging which is not that obvious like the other example when you use this product when you use this faucet you would probably not even understand you have been nudged but let's assume you are one of the 66 percent who are actually washing your hands after being in the bathroom you will probably use this faucet as most people do you have the lever in the middle position you lift it water runs you wash your hands you close you close it and uh, what happens in this case is that when you open the valve the water is running from two pipes that's the warm water pipe and the cold water pipe and uh, the water is then mixed within the faucet to give you the optimal mean temperature the problem is that uh, the warm water needs a little while so uh, from your heating device to the faucet couple of meters and that takes about a few seconds to get there which means that uh, by the time you have been washing your hands by the time you're closing the valve uh, the warm water does in many cases not even reach the faucet so in fact what you have been doing you have been washing your hands with cold water that you might say is not a problem i mean washing your hands with cold water after visiting the bathroom is probably not the problem which is decreasing your comfort too much however what you have been doing in that process is that uh, there is a lot of water warm water is now standing in the line you didn't even use it but it's it's there and you used money and you used energy actually to heat that water up which is not good for your purse and which is not good for the environment so the question is do you really need this warm water or is it enough to just wash your hands with cold water some manufacturers then saw this problem and uh, they came up with a solution so when the lever 
is set as it as you can see on the picture, meaning in the middle. Uh, you open it, the faucet will ju just deliver cold water. So no warm water is delivered to the faucet, no warm water is running into the warm water line. And uh, if you wash your hands and um, you don't really need warm water, you will just get cold water delivered. If you, in some cases, really would like warm water, then you have deliberately turned the lever to the left, meaning to the warm side, and only then warm water is delivered to the, to the system. And uh, then you will probably, when you do this decision on purpose, you will probably wait this few seconds until the, the water gets warm and you will really use it. This will, in most cases, save you money. This will, uh, will save the environment. And at the same time, it is even better for the materials, which are not degrading too much. Okay, until now, we have been looking at example of good nudging or effective nudging. Uh, what you can see from all these examples is that um, a good nudging or the, a nudging is the better the the less effort it takes from you the more it becomes unconscious and uh, as in the last example with the faucet uh, the notching is even not noticeable unless you understand the technical details behind the product so uh, if you can achieve this uh, I, I think uh, you're in optimal position now now have a look on uh, these samples it is a attempt or it both both uh, samples are an attempt to stop you from from smoking by using nudging um, left hand side uh, is an example from uh, from Europe I guess the United States have the same thing the right hand side is from Australia which one do you think is better nudging which one has the higher possibility to uh, avoid people from from smoking I think the answer is obvious, but um, it also shows, and that's why I just wanted to oppose these two examples. It, uh, it shows that uh, the more unconscious the process is, the more effective it is. And uh, unconscious means in this case, the more emotions are involved. By uh, having just the text, like on the left-hand side, uh, you need your cognition. Your cognition is of course important in the nudging process but it really does not help you to yeah well you know that smoking is not is not healthy but uh, and uh, you you will die maybe in advance but uh, yeah however huh? on the right hand side you can see things which you really 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 don't want to get <laughs> and uh, there you have a much more emotional relationship to this type of nudging. Uh, I, I come back later to uh, nudging and emotions, but uh, here I, I think you can see what is bad or good. Well, bad or good is maybe not the right title, better or worse ways of nudging. So, so the more emotions you can involve, the better, the less effort it takes to um, nudge somebody into the right behavior the better it is and uh, the less you understand that you actually have been nudged the more unconscious the process the nudging process is the better it is or the more effective it will be well now you have seen nudging in different examples um, there are much more examples and uh, if you are now thinking that uh, one of the biggest areas of nudging I did not even mention, and um, that could be the commercial area, uh, you might be right. Uh, the commercial, in commercial area in the supermarket or on the internet and, and so on, you are actually nudged in a way that you might be even tricked into buying things which you don't need, which you don't want, which uh, where you're after purchase after the product uh, you brought your product home you're asking why why did I buy this yeah well you were nudged into it and this is 
according to me, a little bit of misuse. But, well, however, this is how our economic system works, <laughs> and uh, nudging can be used for that as well. Um, from my point of view, as a university researcher, I'm mostly interested to use these technologies in, in a way to improve um, products, in, improve processes, and make people feel better, not in a way to uh, optimize personal gain from, from uh, actors in, in commercial advertising. Um, in the background, you can see a mind map that has been done of Bedford University. Um, I, I don't want to go into in, into it in, in detail, but uh, you can of course see that uh, nudging is a very complicated process involving different systems, different sciences, different uh, uh, branches. Um, I, I think we stop here with the examples and uh, in the next part uh, I will then show you a little bit how to achieve nudging. What techniques can we use and uh, what should you think of when you design a nudge? I call this slide nudging techniques. Uh, this does not necessarily mean that uh, it's an exclusive list. Um, there might be more techniques, there might be more ways to, to nudge, but uh, I was looking for what are the most common ways to nudge, and um, by, by looking on what does literature say, by looking on to what examples uh, uh, I could find, and I think I extracted four of them. So let's start with the default option. And I think today, what any time of the day which you're listening to this video, you will probably have met some of those default options where you have been nudged into a certain, into a certain direction. So here, for example, you're opening your computer or you're closing a software or something like that. And uh, the software is asking you, do you want to close these tabs? Um, that was my web browser here, and um, uh, you have a pre-selection close tab. So just look on that. You just have to uh, uh, so just to click on that, and uh, you do not even I do not even read that. I know what the computer asks me, and I just well uh, close the tabs. Yes, that's okay. Uh, there is when I was talking about uh, when I was talking about um, commercial users, there is a way actually to trick you might be that um, you are on the internet and uh, one of those dialog boxes comes up and um, that could be a virus for example asking you something and you by default you don't even think of it you just by default click on the pre-chosen option because that's mostly the option you want but in in the end it turns out that was where you yeah whatever allowed uh, some type of virus to install on the computer or it could be a way where you're on some type of shopping homepage and uh, you suddenly bought an option which you don't want you want to have this express you didn't want to have this express uh, packaging but now you get that or, or something like that so you have to be uh, it, it can be very useful um, to in order to speed up processes, working processes on your computer for you, but on the other hand, it can be misused. So be be aware of of that. The second technique is uh, social proof heuristics, meaning, yeah, well, you typically do as others do, um, both in a positive and a negative way. I was talking previously on the littering situation if uh, everybody is littering well i will litter as well even if my attitude or uh, my, my values are different because everybody does it the possibility or probability is high that i i do it on my own um so uh, by using a situation where everybody does it in a certain way you will probably be drawn in the same into the same direction um Here's a situation at an airport, typical situation at an airport. Um, the nudging in this case are these belts here or, or these 
yeah, what would you say, barriers, and um, you do as everybody else would do. Actually, what happens if you just would creep under this? I think people would get angry. And uh, in this case, uh, the nudging is a very strong way of nudging. If you can find uh, a attitude of people around and uh, enhance it by nudging, I think uh, there are very few people who can do the other way around. As a third technique, you have this uh, increasing the salads. I use this sample with uh, uh, Homer Simpson. Homer Simpson, as you probably know, is somebody who really eats unhealthy stuff, loves donuts, and uh, here it's a way how can we make him eat more healthy. And uh, by enhancing the salads, by actually putting the apples and good fruit very close to, to him and more easy to reach uh, in reach as I showed you in, in slide number three. Uh, he is more likely to, to buy this. Also there's another compo component and this is this social proof heuristics uh, where you have uh, uh, the other persons around actually using or displaying a better different behavior so uh, what you can see that it's mostly nudging or nudging can be more effective if you combine uh, several of the nudging techniques presented here and last but not least we have this arousing curiosity techniques uh, one of the examples we had was this uh, cookie monster waste bin uh, that's something which is arousing um, curiosity. This is, uh, I think, uh, even even arousing the desire. I really want to use it. I, imagine it would be a, a thing where you some have some type of mechanical effect as well that you really want to use it. Uh, this is arousing curiosity. Uh, I didn't want to repeat the same picture here, but um, I, that's why I, I used uh, this one here, where you have this. Uh, the staircase on the staircase you have different types of text and arrows and uh, even if you don't know initially what it means it arouses your curiosity and you start having a look on that in this case it's a nudging to use the staircase instead of the escalator or elevator probably and um, making you burn burn calories in some way meaning that um, people have understood that or the makers of this have understood that people are very likely uh, having the attitude towards, well, the more I move myself, uh, the more calories I burn. And uh, now it's just information here. You have a good opportunity to burn a few calories. So this is just a gentle invitation to use the stairs. Well, a gentle invitation, a gentle reminder a mild warning. That is what nudges are. Um, nudges can never be offensive. They can never be threatening because uh, people are most likely to react negative on these types of, of nudging. If you have a look on uh, uh, these nudges here, uh, where you have the burgers here, in, in some way have a look on them uh, this is quite a negative nudging uh, would you like this ex uh, would you like extra large fries with that meaning that you already have them so much would you extra fries extra large fries too i mean underlying okay you really get fat now i, I think that's something which people really don't don't want to hear and then they are probably they're not probable to to react positively on on that if you want to nudge them into more healthy eating or snacking, this would be a good way for for kids in particular. But I think even as an adult, uh, you could say that uh, this nudging is, is a positive way, something which is attractive to, to most people. So uh, be friendly. Always be, be friendly, be encouraging, 
be in a way that uh, even you would understand that even if you don't accept the much, even if you don't accept uh, that, even if people do not do as you want, you do not necessar necessarily condemn them. So don't be judging. Um, I mean, going back to to the smoking thing, uh, it's yeah. Well, it's probably very very difficult to stop smoking. So uh, if you want people to, well, if they fail, if you want if you want them to to get back and try again you have to be friendly you have to be convincing you have to be uh, encouraging and you have to be that repeatedly maybe it takes 10 15 20 100 nudges before people actually do this i mean have a look on yourself how do you think i mean talking about uh, waste uh, separation for me personally i, I can tell i can tell you that uh, yeah, I know I should waste separate, but in the end, yeah, well, sometimes it looks like this uh, slide I, I showed you, everything is mixed together. But then when I put that into the into the container, I realize, okay, I should do something about that. Then I start and uh, fail and start and fail. And eventually, uh, when I'm nudged enough, I, I will adapt the, the new behavior. New behaviors are never adapted within, yeah, five seconds it maybe takes weeks months years to uh, to adapt uh, to adopt new uh, new behaviors so uh, try not to be judging try not to be threatening um, i mentioned that in the case uh, of uh, don't mess with texas um, that's a very good slogan but in combination with uh, the threat of a fine well it probably uses a little, bit of, a little bit of its power. That's why I would actually separate those things or even leave it out with the fine. As I said before, uh, there are different ways of nudging. And I said also that uh, the less the you feel the nudging, that you actually nudge, the more effective, the better it is. And um, if you want a nudge which feels less, you should involve emotions in in a stronger way. I mean, I mean, if you have a nudge which is heavily reliant on cognition, it takes a lot of time to be processed, and uh, um, then the threshold in order to um, convert the nudge into a behavior change is much higher. Also, during your daily life, your cognition is used a lot for other things it's it's mostly blocked if you want to have a nudge which goes over the cognitive uh, channel you need a very very strong impulse from outside so why not using emotion as nudges this picture here i think is or this image here is uh, i think um, saying a lot of things to me it says well she really would like to have this donut but she's looking at the apple so it could be some type of bad conscience could be something like oh the apple really looks juicy it's, it's shiny and all that stuff so if you consider or if you think if you plan for which would be a suitable emotions to be used to achieve the notch you have the much higher possibility to to succeed emotions you can use is something like joy how do i get joy well if i give or for charities or something like that good conscience uh, a very typical uh, emotion in, in nudging choosing a better environmental uh, thing um, choosing the healthier options over the the bad burger or something like that increasing happiness doing the right thing feeling healthy and or even yeah well why not bringing in some type of surprise factor as i said for the for the uh, cookie monster um, waste bin that is a surprise factor you b might be strolling around somewhere outside and then you suddenly see this cookie monster you recognize it instantly as a cookie monster takes you maybe 
one or two seconds to understand it's not the cookie monster, it is actually a waste bin. And, and by this you have some type of pos uh, positive emotions because the cookie monster might be, is, yeah, in most cases it, it is positively uh, associated by many people and uh, suddenly people are more likely to, uh, to use it. There are tools to handle emotions in products. Actually, this is what, what I originally, what my research originally is about. Uh, I, I think that's too much for this type of presentation, but uh, have a look on this channel and uh, you will find more of that information later on. But uh, these methodologies within effective design and engineering, uh, which can be used, uh, are identifying the emotional needs and uh, the properties of the product or, or the, um, the object you want to nudge and uh, using then mostly quite clever, ma maybe sometimes quite quite uh, difficult mathematical tools, but, but in the end you will establish a linkage between the intended feeling and the object to nudge. And uh, by being able to quantify that, you can then optimize the product or the object in order to have a maximum nudging, giving the maximum nudging impression. This is by enhancing certain traits of, of the product or object. For example, going back to this cookie monster uh, example, just putting some eye, <laughs> some, some eye products on, on top of the bin makes it look like a cookie monster or be recognized as a cookie monster and suddenly it gets a very different emotional response of the users. So then, I think you should take some time and consider how you could use this technology. Here's an example. This is not nudging. This is just a presentation of a donut and an apple. They have different properties, they have different traits, the apple tastes different, uh, but uh, in they are similar in a way of how they are used, in what situation they come in. They come in maybe at half past ten in the morning when you're sitting at your office and you think, well, I'm a little bit hungry, so let's go for a snack. And then you go to your local vendor and you find out you have an apple or you have uh, this donut. So uh, if you were this vendor, how would you do? What would you do? What, what, what tools would you use? So please feel free and press stop and uh, think about it. And here we have a different situation or is it the same? Well, think about it. It's the same goal, right? You might want to get people eating more healthy stuff. So you might want to get people choose the salad over the crisps. The difference is, however, that it is a very different situation. The apple and the donut would be in a different environment. It would be in your office or it would be on the go, on, on the train or something. Uh, you would probably never go with a bowl of crisps on in, in these situations. You would not have, have them on, on the table in your, in your office, I guess. So this particular situation will occur at your home, will occur at certain times of the day. So um, maybe not in the morning, but maybe in the afternoon or in the evening when you're just sitting watching TV and you want to have a snack then. Then you would, might choose or what, uh, what might choose the crisp. But what can we do of instead using the crisps, uh, in, instead of eating the crisps, um, choosing this, this nice salad? What you will understand if you think about it a while, that uh, even though you have the same goal as uh, the 
uh, as, as the previous example, and uh, you have the same um, attitudes toward food as in the example in the previous example, you would need very different nudges to achieve it, right? And that brings us to the end of this presentation. Thank you very much if you stayed with me all this way. Um, if you need more information, well, I guess you can find a lot of stuff on, on the internet just by Googling. But if you have special questions to those samples I was showing you here or to our research, just feel free and drop me a line. Have a very nice day. Bye bye.